If I could only choose one nymph, it would be a hare's ear, for me at least. Classic pattern. This is a little twist. This is Kaufman, Randall Kaufman's uh, variation. Uh, no bead, no lead. I plan on using this hare's ears underneath a um, dry fly. And so I want my dry fly to suspend it, and so I choose not to use any weight. If you're going to uh, be using this under an indicator, add a bead, add some lead, absolutely. But uh, we're going to start off with the tail here. My tail is a little bit shorter than the length of the hook. I just took a good pinch of rabbit fur off the rabbit's mask. I'm really looking for those uh, stiffer fibers, those guard hairs for my tail. Get all that little fuzzy stuff underneath out of there, and as you tie it in, it will come out. It's going to become part of your dug -in. so don't worry too much about that, all that little uh, fuzzy stuff. It'll tie it in. You know, when you're tying these, you know, 12 at a time, um, don't worry about those little things like that fuzz. I don't really care about that kind of stuff. I'm going to be dubbing over that anyways. I'm using some Mylar tinsel here. I'm going to use gold Mylar tinsel. This is size small. You can absolutely use ultra wire if you want it to. That gives it a little extra weight to get down a little quicker. But like I said, these are going to be suspended underneath, I don't know, size 14, size 12 dry flies. And so um, I don't want them too heavy. For the body, I'm going to dub up some natural hair's mask once again. I, I cut it uh, if I need to with my scissors to make it a... Uh, a little shorter in length if needed. I also like to add a little bit of hairline um, dubbing, just the regular dubbing, which is the uh, rabbit dubbing. And you can see some of it dubs a little tighter, some of it protrudes out a little bit more for that buggy uh, feel, and I really like that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and do, do some nice open spiral wraps with the mylar giving it some segmentation, giving it some bling bling. And um, that will catch the fish's attention. Randall Kaufman originally tied these in olive and in black. I'm tying it in brown. I've had a lot of success with this color. I'm going to build a little uh, thorax here out of this is SLF dubbing. This is Kaufman's blend. Since we're tying the Kaufman CDC hairs there, I figured why not use the Kaufman blend, which is a lot of sparkle, a lot of different colors in there, golds, greens, reds, purples. A lot of nice shine to get the fish's attention. I'm not going to dub my thorax too tight because I do want it to be a little buggy for legs. And of course, we're going to be adding CDC as well for some legs. We're just going to build a nice little bump right behind the eye of the hook there. We'll build a little thorax. Nice little taper as well, extending from the body forward. If you have any uh, little strands of dubbing that you don't care for, just cut them out of there. You'll notice I'm using a lot of wax. For a few years, I didn't use any wax, but Jay Nicholas got me into using wax again. Um, it does just make a more durable fly. It holds the material in. It makes it easier, especially for those beginning uh, to tie flies for putting dubbing onto the thread. Anyways, this is a piece of natural CDC here. Uh, I tied it in by the tip. I pulled it back onto itself and secure it with a few wraps. And this is a very delicate feather. I'm going to use some hackle pliers here and carefully I'm going to do about two to three wraps. And every time I come around, I'm going to sweep back the fibers with my fingers. For years, I avoided buying CDC just because it's expensive. Um, however, it's a, it's an amazing material. A lot of fishermen here in the United States uh, were introduced to it in New Zealand back in the 
early 1980s. They came back and was like, wow, this stuff works awesome, including Randall Kaufman. He was the one who uh, was telling me a little bit of history about CDC and whatnot. Anyways, two to three wraps. I'm going to stroke all of that back. And as I'm stroking it back, I'm going to do a couple of thread turns up and onto the feather to hold that feather back, as you can see right there. I don't like a ton of CDC, as you can see. I go pretty sparse, but I also go pretty long on it. A lot of movement, and it catches, like I said, the fish's attention. This fly, um, I'll put it underneath a dry fly. I would fish this under an indicator. For those of you who are really into the European um, nymphing, I would even use this as a dropper fly if you're doing a two or three fly setup. And of course, um, it's the hairs there. Classic. Give them a shot. Thank you for watching.